rooftop solar. And today we're talking about the basics of solar. Um, most people know that light produces electricity when it hits a solar cell, and somehow that comes through your home, but uh, a lot of people don't know about what happens in between. So just briefly, um, we can start talking about that. And to start with, I suppose, uh, uh, light from the sun, photons, hit the solar panel and are absorbed in the silicon material and electrons flow from your solar panels into, into the home. This is the inverter. The inverter changes uh, the DC uh, or low voltage into a high voltage uh, AC, AC waveform that you can use in your home that all your appliances use. Um, the, in the first days, solar panels were, were in satellites in 1958. That's uh, how long they've been around for, but obviously they've come a fair way since then. Uh, the word photovoltaic, photo meaning light and voltaic meaning electricity. Well, hi Mark, I'm interested in buying some solar, but I don't know anything about it. So how do I know how many solar panels I'm going to need in my home? Well, to start with, um, You'll need to know how many appliances you have, um, what warnings they are, and uh, how often you use them. And once the solar contractor has that sort of information, then um, they can start to formulate how many panels you need, what your power requirement is. Um, it's a personal thing. It also depends on how much money you have in your purse. Um, so some systems are very expensive. But one of the big things as well is um, reducing your overall uh, consumption. So if you can get that down by 20-30% to start with, which a lot of times is quite achievable, uh, then that'll save you quite a considerable amount uh, with your rooftop solar. Um, this system I have here is a hybrid system because we have a, a battery box. So the light is converting electricity, comes down the inverter, and assuming we don't have too much in the way of appliances on, we'll get a charge going to feed into our batteries. Especially for people during the day where um, they're at work and uh, uh, they're not much in the way of appliances are on, a lot of that, uh, that energy will go into the batteries. Uh, when they get home from work, um, we can start to utilise that energy. Uh, and depending upon how many appliances we've got on, we may just need that energy from the batteries, or if we're using a fair bit, cooking and that sort of thing, we may need some AC power from the street. And once again, this is a typical circumstance. This is a, a suburban sort of place, and um, we have AC power available to us. So what happens if we don't have, if we're totally off the grid and we don't have AC power? Available. We don't have AC power. Uh, once again, it depends on how much money we want to spend and what our requirements are. Um, a lot of the time, heating is, is the big thing uh, with energy. It, um, it requires the most amount of energy to heat anything, uh, whether it be water, cooking, that sort of thing. So, a lot of off gridders will be using uh, uh, gas for cooking and perhaps gas for uh, heating hot water. So that will drastically reduce how much consumption you'll need. So that will drastically reduce how many solar cells you'll, you'll need to power the things you need. And how long do the solar panels last for? Uh, they go downhill from the day you buy them. They go uh, in efficiency, they reduce over the years, but they're usually guaranteed for about 20 years and you'll, you, most people will find that 30 years would easily be what you're looking at. And what about a warranty if, it, if something cracks or something gets broken? Depends on the manufacturer. Different uh, manufacturers have different warranties. Uh, the, the better uh, first string you know, panels will uh, have a higher warranty than the, the cheaper Chinese ones. But usually there's only about five or ten years difference. Mm. 
So that's it. Um, we can import and export from the grid in this circumstance. Um, we have different types of inverters. We have a grid tie, uh, which is basically without our battery box. We have a hybrid system, which is pretty much shown here with our battery storage. And also we have microinverters. Um, microinverters is where we have no main inverter. We have little inverters on the back of the panels. And that is providing for us 230 volts on the roof. Uh, so we don't require the main inverters. Uh, now that has advantages and disadvantages, but um, uh, they're more expensive to start with. Yeah. Um, light changes uh, into electrical energy in the solar panels. We have DC current coming down to the inverter, which changes that into 230 volts we can use in the home. Um, the excess will dribble down into a battery box that we can, where we have energy we can use later on. Um, we also have AC power from the street or the utility where we can import and export uh, energy and we can make our 8 or 9 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, so the starting point with any installation is um, working out what you've got, how often you use it, putting that down on paper and uh, working out what your requirement is. So if you like this video, press the red button and like. Thanks, sir. See you next video. Bye.